Hi, this is John Exman, and I am the uh, lead pastor at Central Trinity United Methodist Church in Zanesville, Ohio. Um, I'm coming to you today from my kitchen table. Uh, a while back during COVID, I did a lot of my messages and things from the kitchen table, and that's what I called the video blog that I did. I'm not quite sure what this one will be called. Uh, this is my first attempt here at uh, doing one for Central Trinity for our new app that we have. Uh, and we are very excited if you're watching it on that today, and we're glad to have you with us. Uh, tonight, though, I wanted to um, talk just a little bit about something that we had been discussing in, in church for the last uh, many weeks. And uh, it was taken from, from Matthew from the seven woes, and uh, it had to do with being hypocritical. Uh, a lot of times I think people don't understand what uh, a hypocrite truly is. They maybe think that uh, being a hypocrite is something that's so obvious that uh, others uh, can tell immediately. And the problem that happens with that and what might be true is that often non-Christians can tell a hypocrite very quickly and they can look and see uh, who's a hypocrite, who's not a hypocrite, and what it is they're about. A hypocrite, um, if you don't know and understand what it means, is someone who basically uh, says one thing, preaches one thing, practices one thing, um, but does another, especially when they're in private and by themselves and not necessarily with those who might know their true beliefs or what they think they believe. And that's really what this is all about. It's the idea that as Christians, we often think that sin is the other guy. Sin is who someone else uh, needs to look at their own life and say, uh, well, I sin at this or I sin at that. Uh, they don't realize and we don't realize that actually um, most scriptures, Jesus is talking to you and to me. And he's trying to say to us, uh, listen up and hear what I have to say for you. And uh, this is that I have found your works not perfect in the sight of my God. It's one of my favorite scriptures is Revelations 3, 2. Uh, and it says, wake up and strengthen what remains is, and is on the point of death. For I have found your works not perfect in the sight of my God. And uh, what that means is, is that why worry about the things uh, that you can't worry about or you can't control, but worry about the things that you have left because they are just on the verge of being gone and soon you'll have nothing left in your connection to your faith. Uh, those are powerful words. And I think when relating to hypocrites, they're even more powerful because uh, being that hypocrite is basically uh, being a Pharisee. And I talked about this and there's actually a, a book that I read a snippet from uh, on the Sunday that I was discussing this. And uh, it's, uh, when Christians get it wrong, and, and Adam Hamilton wrote it, and this is what he says, uh, it's so easy to do the right things for all the wrong reasons. It's so easy to point out the sins of others while ignoring our own. Most of us are experts at majoring in the minors while failing to do the really important things God demands of us. And which of us has never put on a face and pretended to be something we're not? It's only in recognizing our tendency to be Pharisees that we have any hope of remaining in recovery. My experience with non-religious people is that they do not expect Christians to be perfect. Hear these words here at the end. In fact, one young adult said, I don't mind that you Christians don't live up to your ideals. I don't live up to all my ideals either. In the end, I guess we're all hypocrites. It's just that I and my friends recognize that we're hypocrites. It seems that many Christians haven't figured this out yet. That's the hard part. 
that our uh, very souls, we haven't realized that we are often the problem. Uh, we're the ones sometimes that look at others um, and say things to others, hurt them, wrong them, and don't take an opportunity uh, when doing that to say I'm sorry, to say we were wrong. Because what we do is we pin that back on that other person and say, well, this is what they did to me. This is why I responded in the way that I did. You know, you hear that all the time, which is, uh, you know, well, I had to do this because, you know, they attacked my character. Or uh, one of the biggest things that bothers me lately is when people say, uh, with all due respect, what that really means is, is I don't respect you really that much at all. And really, here's what I'm saying. Uh, with all due respect, I don't like you and I'm not going to listen to what you say. So think about this. What is it that's on the point of death in your faith right now related to your actions, your deeds, who you are towards others? Could it be that you're very judgmental? Could it be that you struggle actually um, looking at the people around you and complimenting you for the things, complimenting them for the things that they do well? Could it be also that you're not just very judgmental, but you're very jealous? You're jealous of uh, your neighbor, your coworker. Uh, you may be even jealous of your children, of the strengths and gifts that they have, that they're given. Or maybe you're jealous of where someone is at their stage in life and you wish that you were still there. Uh, the biggest thing, though, is, is that probably deep down somewhere, uh, you just feel like... Um, the love that you have in your life doesn't equal that much. And so we do what we always do. We try to step on others to bring them down to our level. So I'm asking you this. We're here right smack dab in the middle of our Lenten season. Week number two. When you're looking at the hypocrisy in your own life, what can you do to strengthen that little faith that you have left? Because see, our faith, you know, it's the size of a mustard seed is what Jesus says. And that's the faith that can move mountains. So what's the little faith that you have that you can keep going in this wonderful, amazing world that we live in? Because it is truly wonderful. There's a lot of really bad things that are happening. But if you pay attention, there's a lot of good going on too as well. In the next few weeks, I'll be pointing some of that out too. Uh, I hope you enjoyed coming here being with us. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to say a prayer for you this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask that you bless those watching, listening, trying to grow. Help us uh, in our Hippocratic moments. Help us in our hypocrisy. Help us in our moments that we go against you. And not only that, but the non-Christian looks at us and says, I don't want to be like them. They have nothing, Father, that they are towards you. They're just blown smoke. I just ask God that you help us to keep growing in our faith, to keep loving you, to keep reaching out to you, to keep sharing with others the love that we have for you. And not only that, Father, but to take those moments when we have it wrong, like when the fact that we don't look at our own faith in our own life and point our finger too much at our brother or sister in Christ. We give all these things to you and we thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I thank you so much if you were watching. 
And I hope you come back and check us out every now and then. Uh, we've got a lot that you can see on our app. Uh, and you can scroll through and see messages, sermons, uh, all kinds of other things. In the next uh, coming weeks, months, I hope to have a few guests in here every now and then. Uh, and have a little fun and have a little discussion on faith and life. And uh, also, I'm quite open, too, if there's... Uh, a name that you'd uh, like to have for this blog because I'm not quite sure right now. But for the moment, we'll talk from the kitchen table. Uh, this is John Xman, and uh, I thank you for listening. <laughs>